water or no water inside your Kamado. Today, we put it to the test. Hey, I'm James from Smoking Dad Barbecue. And I've got a confession to make. I don't like rules. Rules often, I find, get us in trouble. And when I just started grilling, there's a number of rules that shall not be broken. One, you look up ribs, the low and slow three, two, one method is so universal in its recommendation, you'd think it were almost biblical in proportion. But if you're willing to throw caution to the wind and test these, I find you get a much better result with hotter and faster, especially in a Kamado style grill. The same was true with my double indirect method. You only need one heat deflector, but when you use both, it allows us to ramp up our convection airflow and get results much closer to my offset style cooker. But there's one rule that I have yet to throw caution to the wind, and that is the water pan. Do you need it? Do you not need it? If you check out the common answers, if I follow along, I see this question on Kamado Joe Nation on Facebook all the time. Do I need a water pan? And the default answer is you don't need a water pan in a Kamado style grill since the ceramic retains enough humidity that just adding water is akin to boiling whatever it is that you're cooking and this will lead to a much worse result. Well, over a decade later and I've not taken my normal rule breaking approach and done a test. So that's what you're in for today. We're gonna do water pan versus no water pan and see if we can taste the difference. Let's do some myth busting. So let me tell you the game plan. Now to make this as fair as possible, ideally you would have two of the exact same grill. And I don't have that. I have a series one Big Joe and a series three Big Joe, but I've already done a couple experiments with my brand new series one that I picked up from Lowe's earlier this year. And I've been able to recreate my double indirect setup by putting the heat deflectors on an optional added charcoal basket, fit the slow roller on top of that, and that is giving me the same benefit double indirect. In fact, when I've done some tests side by side, I can't taste the difference between my series one and my series three. So given that these are so close, that's the plan today. I'm gonna set them both up double indirect with the only difference on the series three where I've got that extra height. We're gonna fill our drip pan with water. So technically we're going triple indirect and see if that makes a difference. So the water pan helps add smoke flavor or if it's just gonna be boiling our ribs and we're gonna get mushy, nasty bark. So we're gonna answer that question for once and for all, but before we do that, let me take you back to a little bit earlier when we wanna set up our Joes as well as prep our ribs for today's experiment. Okay, so starting with our Big Joe Series 3, I have three small pieces of apple that I'm gonna use for smoking wood. If these were a little bit larger or solid, I'd use one or two, but as they're uh, quite small, I'm gonna go for three. So we'll just place these on the bottom and let's cover this up with what leftover charcoal we have. And then let's cover that up with some fresh fogo. Okay, as you can see, I've shaped that into a little mound. I like a little bit more towards the back as that's the natural burn direction. I also wanna make sure that I can see the air holes in our firebox so I know that I'm getting great airflow. And I don't want to really come above the basket since that'll be putting the fire right on the slow roller. So let's grab a grill blazer grill gun, start this up, fire it up. Okay, that looks good. And in lapse time, it's about one minute and we're just waiting till we have some nice white ashed over coals. Let's grab the base of our slow roller. We'll close our dome and let's go over to the series one and start to fire there. Bottom vent is all the way open and top vent is all the way open. Okay, this part would be eerily familiar. Same three chunks of apple. We'll cover them up, grab some more fogo. Again, shaping that into a little mound with a slight bias towards the back. Uh, and in case you're wondering, if you haven't heard before, I'm going with uh, Fogo. Since my family just loves the smoke prof uh, profile list, it's a little bit lower. It tastes the most, honestly, like the offset. This tastes most like cooking with wood. Uh, as you can see, you know, you some resemblance here to some branches and things. Uh, and we can add our own smoke, which is what I'm doing with apple. So that's why I've gone with Fogo today is I can customize the flavor and highlight the apple uh, versus getting just a pure charcoal taste. So once again, grab our grill blazer grill gun, fire it up. And let's close this, let it warm up. Bottom vents open, top vents open. 
Okay, our grill's coming up to temperature, so I've set out everything we need. I'm gonna use a little mustard today. Uh, I'm not adding any sugar to our rub, so the mustard's just gonna help give us a little bit of those sugars, which will help caramelize, build a nice bark. Like normal, we're gonna have salt. So this is diamond crystal kosher salt, some fresh cracked black pepper. If you haven't tried fresh cracked uh, black pepper, it makes a world of difference. I decided to go for the pepper cannon since by now I've already paid for itself versus sort of buying some of these off the shelf rubs. Each one uh, can get up to about $32 at my local barbecue store. And so uh, this is a break even proposition for me, but um, any pepper mill or grinder will do the trick. I just like this one since it's very precise and uh, gives me a nice consistent grind in a fraction of the time. We're gonna have some garlic, some Lowry's, and then I'm going for a little bit of a different flavor profile today. So I'm gonna add a little bit of cumin and oregano. I'll take you fast forward and jump in for some measurements, but I'm going to use the bottom measuring cup here of the pepper cannon as my base. So I'm gonna fill this up with pepper, then we'll add salt. Take it fast forward while I get grinding. So I know you can't quite see, but there's a line here at the top of the cap. So that's a, a cap full of pepper. Let's add that. Since we're gonna go about 50% salt, 50% pepper, I wanna dilute my salt content not to be all Lowry's or not to be all diamond crystal. So I'm gonna do about two thirds uh, diamond crystal and one third of Lowry's. Looks good, let's add that. So now you can see we're about 50% salt, 50% pepper. Let's go for a dash of garlic here, dash of oregano, and a dash of cumin. That looks good. Okay, so as you can tell, just as I was cleaning up, thought I might need a little bit more rub, so I just ended up doubling exactly what I did off camera. So we are ready to go. So we got our rub, our mustard. Let me uh, glove up here while I'm talking to you. Uh, I got a, a good savings on these, by the way. I'll put a link down below. I finally found a pair that doesn't rip every time I put my big mitts into, uh, into them, which is nice, as well as they fit over some cotton gloves. And then uh, the only other thing I have, I don't know if these will have the membrane or not, so I've got a butter knife to help peel that off, as well as a knife for cleaning and trimming these up so we get nice equal lengths. I'll take you fast forward while we get these out of their packaging. Okay, so as these are side ribs, I'm not gonna include these in the taste test, but I am gonna cook them since I don't wanna get rid of uh, this meat, but I'm going to focus on our presentation cuts here. So we've got pretty equal looking pieces for each grill. So I'm just gonna go in the center, try and work my knife under the membrane, and then I've got some paper towel that'll help me pull that up. So once you've got that started with a butter knife, it's a little bit easier just to work your glove hands all the way through, like so. And then once I grab here, I can push down. And don't even need the paper towel. We got that with one pull. So we got rid of the membrane on that one. Let's do the same thing on our second. So now we can put some mustard on for our binder. I'm gonna start here on the bottom and then we'll finish on our presentation side. Make sure our rub is nice and mixed up and give that a nice even coat. Flip them over, that looks good. Now let's just do our side cuts here. I wanted to make sure I had enough rub uh, for those, which is why I did our presentation stuff first. So we'll just cover these up and we'll still get some Pitmaster treats out of these guys. So I'm glad I made uh, double that because the two capfuls, I, I think it would have been just a little bit short when I added our end pieces. So that's about how much rub we used. Let's get these on. Okay, our grill has come up to temperature. This is hot. I don't want to hold my hands much longer than five seconds, but not scolding. So I know that we are properly heat soaked. So now let's install the rest of our double indirect setup. Okay, so this is on our Series 1 Joe. As I've done in a previous test, I found out the results of the double indirect came out indistinguishable by going with a double indirect in the slow roller using this configuration on a Series 1 or Series 2 grill. So if you haven't seen that, I'm gonna install the heat deflectors on the charcoal basket. That is the only uh, other upgrade to make this work on a Series 1, Series 2 grill, is I need these little tabs for the heat deflector to sit on. So let me grab the other one. And I'm using high heat gloves to help make sure that I don't drop those into position. So now I'm just gonna make sure they're nice and centered. 
I'm looking straight down so I can see an even air gap all the way through. I'll show you a clip here from the video where I did that test. So if we were to reverse this in the slow roller, you get a sense of the air gap that exists all the way around, but that looks good. Next, we've got our slow roller, top of our slow roller. So you can tell this is a brand new slow roller. When I did that test the first time, I was worried that maybe it might superheat the base and cause a problem, but there was no issue, so confident to use it. So I'm gonna use the included divide and conquer rack, which is just a little bit taller than the uh, stock divide and conquer rack, which will give me room to drop in my smokeware drip pan and our two cooking grates. Perfect, let's close that up, let it stabilize. Okay, our Big Joe Series 3 is also up to the temperature, nice and hot to the test. So let's set this up for a double indirect. Just get on some high heat gloves so I don't get burnt in the process. Start with our slow roller, divide and conquer rack. Our X accessory is on the middle position. Then we can drop in our heat deflectors. Another large, this is the 14 inch size smokeware pan. And for the first time, water. So that looks full to the edge without spilling over. It is hot water, by the way, just so that it uh, had time to preheat. I'll put the bottom vent also down to one finger and the control tower top, I'll close to about a quarter inch past that first line. Let that stabilize. All right, we're riding along right at 250 degrees on each grill. So let's get our ribs and get them on. It's our last chance to affect the shape. So if you like push the bones together, it'll be a little bit easier for slicing through. Perfect, looks good. Let's do the same on our Big Joe Series 3. Hit with a nice waft of steam, but no boiling water or anything crazy going on there. Get our side cut on. Close that up, let that cook. Okay, we're about halfway into our three hour cook and we're humming along at about 300 degrees. So I no longer smell apple wood coming out of the grill. I smell pork instead. So I'm just gonna take a handful of chips, look for where I see some of those hot coals falling down and this will give us about another hour of apple smoke. Slide that back in, back to one finger. Let's go do the same on series one. Okay, this will look exactly the same as our series three. The only difference we're gonna make here is uh, I'm going to spray these ribs. So the other ribs have the water pan in our series three, so they shouldn't need any spray. So let's open up our dome. Those are looking great. And give these a quick spray. This is just a mixture of apple cider vinegar and water, half and half. And I like to spray immediately after adding those wood chips since those are gonna to start to smoke and that smoke needs a humid environment to adhere. So that's why we wanna spray right after we add those wood chips so we get the benefit of that smoke sticking to our ribs. Okay, we are about three hours and 15 minutes and our ribs look and feel done. Now, just a quick note here. What I have not added is any sauce because I don't wanna mask any of the doneness and the texture of the ribs, nor have I gone for the foil boat. I love the foil boat in a Kamado style grill because it protects the bottom and gives plenty of time for the top to continue to develop a bark. But I thought again, that would potentially mask what happens when we add water versus not having water. So I wanna be able to see the bottoms of both racks of ribs as well as the tops and our taste test. So I can add that a little bit after when we take them inside for the family. But for our experiment today, I really wanna just isolate the water difference. So let's get these off, slice into them and do our taste test. Okay, so let's start with our Big Joe Series 3. So I don't know if you can quite tell from the water level there. Actually, there's not a good way I can show the camera, but we've gone through about half of the water. So we're no longer up to the brim. The top of our ribs, the rub is not coming off. It definitely doesn't look as mahogany as I'm used to, but let's take a look at the bottom here. And that also looks different. So not sure I love how they look, but the feel and temperature is good. So let's just make sure I don't break them in half, get these off on the board. Let's go look at our Big Joe Series 1. Okay, so moving over to our Big Joe Series 1. And they look uh, very similar on the top. So maybe that's just more of our rub, not having any paprika or maybe the foil boat. Let's check out the bottom. 
a little bit more color on those compared to uh, the bottom of the foil, or sorry, the water pan, but so far these look pretty similar. Let's get them off, slice them up. I'll meet you over there for our taste test. Okay, so I've kept these in order. So behind me here is the Big Joe Series 1, and in the same place is the Big Joe Series 3. So let's get out our knife here, cut out a centerpiece. Let's take a look. So we've got smoke ring, top and bottom. Good looking done this. Let's try our series three here. And I think on this one, we actually have a better smoke ring. So more smoke, smoke ring on the top, top and bottom. We'll maybe get a few more out, but right now I actually think that's a better looking smoke ring. So let's get a, a rib off here and do our taste test. Well, they certainly look the part. All I can really tell is the bottom on the double indirect without the water pan looks a little bit more like a pronounced bark where the ones with the water pan look boiled, but the top definitely looks the same. The rib that I did get out, I, I maybe spoke too soon. That, that smoke ring is pretty comparable. So I'm actually not even sure if there's a difference there. So let's dive in for a taste test. I'll start with normal double indirect since that's what we're used to and see if we can notice a difference when we go to the water pan, any improvement or any deterioration of uh, flavor or texture. So let's start with our control rib. It's a good rib, tender, juicy, <laughs> loving the dry rub, that pepper, really pronounced, it gives a little bit of heat and dissipates. You don't get that with the pre-ground stuff. That really is a big difference. Mm. Mm. Bite through tenderness, that's good. That's tasty. Let's go for our water pan. See if we can tell a difference. Get a nice bite. It does taste different. Can't quite place what though. Let's try another bite. It's good. <laughs> One more bite. So that is interesting, but I will say maybe inconclusive. What I'm picking up here is a, the bark is identical on the top. So the taste that hits the tongue there is no difference. The bottom, I can't really appreciate since it's mostly bone anyways. And so maybe ribs are not the best way of telling what it does to the bottom. Maybe something like a brisket or a pork roast where you would have more of a bottom that would either be mushy or bark texture would be easier to tell than the rib where you're really just getting the middle and the top on top of the bone since I can't tell any difference. But I will say it's a little bit more moist and flavorful on the water pan uh, ribs. So I'm going to call this a, a, a not yet dead, definitely not worse. And I think we need to do another test. So let me know in the comments what you think we could put head to head. But definitely, I think the water pan is kicking with some uh, legs of its own here in terms of maybe being something that we want to add because that's a little bit more tender, a little bit more juicy. The flavor uh, between the two is, you know, spitting close. I can't quite tell a difference. All I can really tell is the tenderness and the juiciness is better on the water pan. So that is a surprise. That again, let me know down in the comments what you'd like to see. And while you're there, make sure you check out the members only section. I go live once a month with members can answer questions in a little bit more of an intimate uh, than setting versus these pre-recorded videos. But until next time, I'm James from Smoke and Dead Barbecue signing off. Remember, don't be afraid to fire it up. Thank you.